Welcome back everybody, David Shepard here on the Humble Hotshot channel with another car haul for you guys. This time we're actually using a bumper pull PJ trailer. So kind of interesting, some differences between the gooseneck and the bumper pull. And I just wanted to kind of go over the question some people have asked, is it even possible to hotshot with a bumper pull trailer? So I'm going to get into that, also explain a little bit about uh, load placement, strapping down. I know we've been over, um, but load placement does vary between gooseneck and bumper pull. So go over kind of some of the weight placement stuff and get into the load behind me right after a quick word of scripture as we always start these videos and we'll continue to do. Today I'm speaking from Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 and 18, which says, though the fig tree does not blossom and the, there is no fruit on the vines, Though the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yield no food. Though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. So praise God. Just a call to praise the Lord. Exult in His name, knowing that He is just faithful and unchanging despite your circumstances despite what's going on in life especially those um you know very physical circumstances habakkuk is is in the old testament it's a minor prophet in the old testament um so just speaking about physical blessings and how god's faithfulness and god's promises are not based just on those physical blessings so even when everything fails even when you're having financial struggles or whatever might be going on in your life yet I will still exult in the Lord. I will still rejoice in his name. So I challenge you guys to do that. I wake up every morning praising the Lord for another day of, of life and for each breath. So whether I'm feeling groggy or feeling great in the morning, I still choose to praise the Lord. And if you do that, I think you'd be surprised how it might, um, might change your attitude, might even change how your day goes in general. So thanks for listening to that, guys. Now I'm going to show you the bumper pull trailer. Uh, this PJ 20 foot deck over actually belongs to um, kind of our interstate partner in Colorado. So this load is going from Aspen, Colorado to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We're almost there now. So we're kind of just at the base of the Tetons. So praise God, it was a super, super scenic route this time. Awesome views pretty much the whole way. And this bumper pull is pulling great. Um, I know we've been over strapping and load placement in the past so i'm just going to go over that real quick but you guys have seen these lasso straps i love using these go around the wheel i always go through the wheel if possible i know a lot of guys go around the tire um you know i just think it's a little more secure this way but either way those lasso straps work great we got two pulling forward two pulling back as always with vehicles and you can see where we've got the vehicle placed on the trailer so for for a general rule of thumb, typically a vehicle's mass of weight or most of its weight is going to be right on the firewall. So kind of right at the back of that fender, um, you know, with your engine and transmission being up front and then the rest of the vehicle being kind of light in the back. Just as a general rule of thumb, you could think of the firewall being your heaviest area right here. So, of course, that's going to vary with um, like with a front engine, front wheel drive your weight's really going to be on that front axle. And honestly, with something like this, these Land Cruisers are known for being top heavy. They're four wheel drive. They got all that glass in the back. So the, the weight point might even be a little further back. But again, as a general rule of thumb, the firewall is where most of your weight is. And so I like to get that massive weight just in front of the front trailer axle if you're dealing with a tandem. Because remember, you want the trailer carrying that load, but you also want a little bit of tongue weight on the truck. Um, if you guys are new to this or even just towing recreationally and haven't done a whole lot, keep that in mind. Um, if a trailer is loaded too heavy to the rear, as soon as you get up to speed, you're going to know it. That thing's going to wag around on you and really handle poorly. And if it's loaded with too much tongue weight, uh, you're going to squat out the truck. You're going to lose weight on your steering axle. So again, affect handling in a different way. Um, and you could really cause some damage to the rear differential if the truck's really squatted out. So the general rule is you could go about 15 to 25% tongue weight when you're using a gooseneck, but only about 5 to 10% on a bumper pull. Now, that's going to depend on what kind of truck you're pulling with. If you have a substantial truck, I would say 
more like 10 to 15 percent even with a bumper pull uh, you can see the trucks not really squatted out at all we do have I think about 65 pounds in the rear airbags I put in this time um, so no squat the rear diff is staying nice and cool back there um, but that's kind of your general rule and that is one major difference with the gooseneck versus the bumper pull bang Harley Davidson's that's the most noise without the side effect of horsepower is a Harley Davidson but just kidding I love to ride I love you Harley guys out there but boy they are noisy so um, a couple other things with a bumper pull trailer um, this one is a 102 width so you can see it's a deck over and it's a full eight and a half feet wide which is awesome for freight but it is not my preference for car hauling just puts that weight a whole lot higher than say my low boy PJ gooseneck that you've seen in the past and you know these are like I said known to be top heavy vehicles to begin with so you do notice it going around curves at speed a little bit of sway especially on a single tire truck so that's something to keep in mind but I've seen other people do this I've seen people hot shot with vans actually um, believe it or not a diesel uh, diesel cargo van which of course you can't run a gooseneck with a van so I've seen actually very similar 20 foot deck over trailers used for hot shotting and you know I think you can make it work you've seen my channel it's all about being creative if you keep your overhead low you could really get by with less deck space so you know just don't be afraid to think outside the box everybody runs a gooseneck or a fifth wheel in this industry but I think you could definitely make money with uh, a good size bumper pull as well so um couple things specific to this trailer uh, especially versus my gooseneck this one has the 8,000 pound oil bath axles and big G rated tires so very heavy duty however I have heard of complaints when you have a tandem single trailer with oil bath it doesn't happen on the tandem duels um, but with tandem single if you ever make a tight corner you could see how those tires flex kind of opposite of each other and sometimes it can be pretty extreme if you're making a really tight turn especially on dry pavement um, with that being said so the what happens there is they say the inner seal on your oil bath axle can blow out and cause a leak so i haven't experienced that personally but it is something to keep in mind and with these uh tandem single bumper pulls i always try to avoid really tight turns um, it's bad for the tires for the suspension and bearings regardless even if you don't blow that seal out um, but that being said my gooseneck was a um, 8,000 pound with the grease bearing hubs and I do prefer that for several reasons it could be a little more maintenance but I'm just really used to repacking those bearings and with the um, the bearing buddies or the easy lube axles it's really not bad to keep up on so with the oil bath axles however it seems easy all you got to do is change the oil every once in a while but you're relying on an inner and outer seal to hold that oil in and if you have any little leak there the oil is going to leak out and it's going to get on your brakes whereas with grease that does happen eventually but of course grease is much thicker than oil so it doesn't tend to be as big of a problem so um i hope that helps you guys especially with the load placement you know i've seen so many trailers just either too rear heavy or too front heavy and seeing tow vehicles squatted out and you just long term it will do damage to the rear differential if you got your truck squatting like that so keep that in mind the firewall as a rule of thumb is going to be your big weight point so position that where you want it this one worked out just about perfectly again we do have rear airbags so that helps but um yeah that weight is right where we want it and it's handling really well i did consider backing this vehicle on so again think outside the box vehicles that are being towed don't always have to point in the forward direction but these things these land cruisers are such a brick of a vehicle to begin with I wanted to maintain a little bit of aerodynamic rather than just have that square rear window catching all the wind so hope that helps you guys um, just just one man's opinion but always in an effort to um, to keep people safe out there to help you guys you know tow better more safely and just have less trouble on the road so uh, one last thing I did want to mention you could learn a lot just from reading the information on your trailer on your hitch um, you know this one's kind of buried in there but you could always check your VIN tag to 
double check your weights and uh, what kind of weight capacity you're dealing with overall on the trailer as well as um, as well as your axle rating so that's a big help and then this uh, this one's a little bit different but your there's always some good information on the tongue here so you can see your full GVWR that this hitch is rated for two and five sixteenths ball of course and then right there it says tongue load what is it? This one says 5 to 10% of GVWR. So there you have it. 5 to 10 for a bumper pull, 15 to 20 or so for a gooseneck. And just keep that in mind when you're choosing your equipment. Don't get set in the ways of this is how everyone else does it. I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, creativity and that there's more than one way to be successful in this business. So hope that helps you guys out once again. And um, really encourage you to just Praise the Lord in the good times, in the bad times, no matter what you're going through, praise the Lord and it will have an effect on your attitude and your life and your health and just, just praising God, is, is it brings joy to my life and I hope it does to you as well. So if you're going through a hard time, if you're going through a struggle in life, we all have those times. That's not the time to stop praying. That's the time to dig in deeper and praise God for for the work he is doing even when you can't see it so thanks guys appreciate listening please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i love each and every one of you and uh take care we'll see you next week